are different layers of consciousness and the surrender has to be done in each layer. My understanding of emotional layer of surrendering would be when my ego is at play in respect of fear or anger. Similarly, there is physical ego at play. Maybe it is laziness. So, firstly, are these examples of facets of ego in different layers correct? And what would be the other examples of ego playing in other different layers? Well, the ego... The ego exerts its pressure, in a sense, or its demands, its clamorings, its insistings, its pushings, its yearnings and so on, in every area or every realm of consciousness that a human being lives in and expresses through. So, the ego can express itself in the actual material, physical, which is what we call tamas, the refusal of the material, physical to move into action when the soul or the truth impulses it to do so. That is a resistance in the material physical and that is the ego at play. Tamas is the ego in the material physical. And the same way in the emotional, the ego can also resist, where it refuses to go with the truth <coughs> impulse of love, but chooses to go with all the pushings through of the ego which result in suffering to the system like it goes with all the emotions that cause suffering to the system and that is the ego in action and the emotional in the same way when the ego is is pushing its way through in the conceptual then it conceptually denies even the very existence for example of the soul itself or of the truth or it devices, arguments to contradict what the truth is impulsing you to do. So the truth sends an impulse to do something, to, sends an impulse to this to do something and the ego contradicts that impulse with an argument which can be sometimes very elegantly, you know, uh, tailored so that this, or the system that is in action, starts to follow the, the command of the ego rather than the impulse of that deep master of the being that you've known as a child, which is the truth. So that's what in the conceptual would be the case. And if you go further, or if you move into a greater expansion away from the conceptual into the transformative, creative, occult art, abilities of the being or the consciousness layer from which the ability to experience the occult happens or the ability to create art happens or to create at all actually happens the ego uh, resists in that layer of consciousness by forcing the system to rationalize everything and pull it back down into the rational And this goes on for various layers of consciousness. I feel that it is more... It's better, in a sense, not to focus that much on what the ego is doing. You know? Even to conceptually grasp the, the machinations of the ego and its manipulations is actually empowering it. It's feeding it. So it's always better to just turn away from... from developing a knowledge about the ego to tuning into the truth. Because the, the ego itself wants to feed itself and know more about itself. Rather than this system bending in surrender and tuning into its Antar Guru or its Antar Atman, its residing material presence, it would like to know what is the ego, what does it do, how is it... how does it work, etc., etc., etc. You'll never be able to grasp the 
subtleties of the ego's action. It's not possible because it will always find another way to trick you and in every moment and all the time. So the way to out-trick the ego is to, is to, is to actually bend down and surrender, to, to move into a love state with the soul, with the master of the being, with the individualized cosmic soul which, which is connected with this, which is the Antar Atman, clearly called that since millennia, because its presence is experienced materially. So that's where your focus would have to move. Of course, you can have discourses on the, on the various hues and shades of the ego and how each of those things functions and, and can trick you, but you'll never ever be able to, to out-trick it if you try to look at it because then you empower it, so it becomes more powerful than you. My question arises from the understanding of being vigilant of the action undertaken. And anger is one thing which can be now seen and as soon as it is there, there is a surrender posture to the Atman, to the Source. And I have seen it positively working also. So I was thinking that there are many actions which may be governed by ego which I am not aware and that is why my question. I just understood Mia, that the vigilance should be not in the action arising from the ego, but rather vigilant in the moment of surrendering. That would solve all the... Yes, all indeed. The These are processes and they have... They're not that simple that you're just always vigilant, focused on the truth. That is the absolute ideal. But also to know that the moment the system is experiencing a sense of suffering, that which is not joy, then you know that something is arising from ego because any action that arises from the impulse of the truth will not bring that uneasy suffering feeling with it. It's very, very subtle and to start with, of course, it's important to know that you have to take up an identity. In this sadhana, it is clearly an identity which is taken up. You're not trying to get rid of your identity, but you take up a simple identity, which is your name, you, and then you are, okay, the son of your mother, and you were born there, and that's the identity you take up. At the start of this sadhana, it's not a sadhana that is rejecting or detaching, but rather it is accepting a slim identity, not more than that because then it grows into ego. And this identity is discerning in every moment between the impulse of the truth and that loud voice of the ego. You can very, very soon distinguish between these two things. You very soon know Aha, uh -huh, this, is, this is the ego and now it's the impulse of the Truth. If you were to identify with the Supreme Soul and say, I am the Soul, then you become the observer of it all, which is detachment, which then does not allow for a transformation of the very causes of that pain which is arising from your own ego actions. So, you don't detach, you simply discern. This is arising from ego, so, so don't undertake that action. This is arising from truth, so go with it. And as you proceed and as you grow in these self-realization processes, you'll start to be able to discern because you'll know that actions that arise from the ego are causing discomfort, suffering, misery actually in the worst case to the, to the whole system. So through the discernment you start to become increasingly an instrument of the Truth and your 
focus then is not on the ego, but rather on the impulse of the truth. Is this the truth impulse that is coming and that I'm acting on, which you know already because you knew it as a child. You were not identifying with Supreme Source and detaching from everything as a child. You were actually simply flowing with the impulse. And that is what the sadhana of this teaching is. It is to take on an identity, start to discern, move into the... into surrender as a servant of the Truth, rather than identify with it. It's just, I, I'm a servant, I love you, I'm a servant. I'm your servant, I'm... the servant of you, the Master, the Soul, the Antar, Atman. And as you grow in the state of surrender, you become more and more an instrument of... of the Truth. And identity falls away, but without detachment, rather embracing and transforming. Through that conscious moving with the impulse of the Truth. So you don't have then to look much at ego, because you will anyway be defeated by ego. If you engage with it, it will defeat you. So focus on... Um, yes, with the... I'll take you after him. And then you, okay.